This is the Geometry Creation and Boolean Logic tutorial for TracePro. In this TracePro video, we're going to look at using Boolean Logic to create new geometry. To start off, we're going to be working with the Insert menu. In the Insert menu, we have a whole bunch of primitive solids we can choose from. Now what we'd like to do is to cut out a spherical reflector out of a block. So let's start off with a block that it's 10 millimeters in X, Y, and Z. If we hit the Insert button, we can now see that block over here on the right side of the page. We're next going to create a sphere that is 5 millimeters in diameter, 5 millimeter in radius, and position it at the Z location of 5. If I hit the Insert button, and I can see over here on the right that we have inserted that particular object. If I want to move that to the left of the screen, I use the pan cursor icon over here to grab the object and then move it across. I'm going to do something unusual here, which is to make the block transparent. To do this in Trace Pro, I click on the block and I right click to modify it. Notice we have quite a few different things that we can do here. Modify, delete, move, rotate, display or not display the object, and finally, Apply Properties. If I click on the Apply Properties, I now see that I have a nice dialog which allows me to put all the optical characteristics that I might want to do on this particular object. For instance, like pick it with a surface property or specify that the object is made of some type of material. For this case, all I want to do is really change the color that I see on the screen and I'm going to make it transparent. Currently it's 50% transparent in both the red, green, and blue wavelengths. If I hit Apply over here, and I close the dialog, I can now see that that block is now transparent. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the sphere away from the block. Currently, they're both in the same coincident area where they overlap in this region. If I click on the block first, and then I hold the control key down, and click on the sphere second, I now have both of them selected. You'll now notice that the three Boolean logic icons are now active. They're no longer grayed out. If I put the tooltip, or the cursor on this long enough, the tooltip to say that this is a intersect type operation would occur, which means I would only be keeping this interior portion. But the one I really want is the subtraction Boolean logic capability, and this will then cut the sphere away from the block, leaving only the block in place. There we go. We can now see if we rotate this particular geometry that we have a hole in the block. You can also change the view so that instead of a rendered view, we have a silhouette view, or we can just put this back to being rendered. Now, rotating this object around, we can then go to the Select Surface icon, and we can select that particular surface. Notice that it gets highlighted in both the system tree on the left and in the system view on the right when we click on it. Great. I like to make this into a reflector. Currently, there is no property on this. In fact, you'll see the word none over here for surface property. It tells me that it's a sphere of 5 millimeters in radius. If I right-click once again, I can apply it a property here. Well, as we see, there's the surface properties. There's my default catalog. If I look at the names of the catalog that are available in terms of surface properties, I can then use the mouse to drag down the list and find a perfect mirror. Of course, there's no such thing as a perfect mirror, but for this application, we'll just set this up this way. I'll then hit Apply over here, and we notice that if we close the dialog, we now have a perfect mirror on that particular location. Notice if we use the cursor to drag across the whole window, we select all the surfaces. But the one we're particularly interested in is in surface number zero, the reflector. In fact, if we double left mouse click, just like in Windows Explorer, we can change the name of that particular surface so we can remember it in later type operations. I'm going to go back to a YZ view, and to do that I'm just going to click on this viewpoint. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop in a source. Say that we had a, a cylindrical filament that was emitting light at the Z equals 2 millimeter area. And we can see that down over here that Z equals 2 when I put it up here. And if I insert another primitive solid, like a cylinder, and I specify that the cylinder is about 2 millimeters in length, about 0.1 millimeter in radius, and I want to create that. It'll be created along the z-axis. So I'm going to rotate this around the x-axis 90 degrees. I'm going to insert it. There we go. There's our, our little cylinder over there in tube. I'm going to put and change the base position to 2 millimeters, and if I hit the modify, it then moves it right across over here. 
Now that's great, but still not in the location that I want. So I'm going to just move it up a little bit. And I do that by just putting a 1 here. Notice I can do that without ever going back into this dialog, because these are modeless dialogs, and until I click on the X over here, those dialogs are always available. I'll click on that now. Now if I rotate this into place, we can see I have my cylinder up and down. Now there are three surfaces, because this is once again a solid, and we have the cone that goes in between the two planes that are the top and bottom of this particular piece. I'm going to go to the tube itself. Once again, I'm going to edit this. And to edit it, I right click, go to properties, and one of my other properties that I can apply is a surface source. I'm going to go to my emission type. Oh, look at this. I've got a flux. I can do radiometric or photometric units. I'll stick with the photometric units for right now. I'll say that the light comes off in a Lambertian manner for a thousand rays. And of course, I have to put in some type of wavelength. And the middle visible wavelength is 0.546 microns. So let me type that in, 546. Oops. And we now apply that. So we need to have at least one wavelength for the source. I need to add that. And now we apply it. And now if we look over in the system tree, we now have a surface source on that particular cylinder. If we turn on the rays, the program will now ray trace those rays from our reflector, sending the light outward. This is the end of the geometry and Boolean logic capability in the program. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you for attending our presentation. If you have further questions on TracePro, please email us at sales at lambdares.com or call us at 978-486-0766, extension 4. We look forward to having you watch our other videos coming soon.